I've had a lot of people ask for my opinion on the fine bros copywriting and trademarking react in regards to their reaction series. Um, this comes off the heels of Sony uh, trying and failing at the moment to patent the term let's play uh, to own the rights to that word. Um, it's worrying. Now, I know the Fine Brothers have responded and said this is all being taken out of context, it's a misunderstanding, they explained it poorly, uh, but it's still the beginning, I feel. It's the beginning of the slicing up, the corporatization of YouTube, which, well, I mean, let's face it, that started a long time ago, but on the ground level now, as people start squaring away their territories and companies start coming in trying to like, like claim the rights to things. We saw this with Sony and, and Let's Play. You know, so many people use that term, it's become ubiquitous, it's, it's this, it's just a commonly understood term that Sony decided, you know what? Trademark law is fucked up enough that we might be able to get away with this. And that's worrying. It's worrying knowing that companies are eyeing YouTube now uh, for what little pieces of, of commonly used content and commonly used terminology they can try and own. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more of it. I think the Fine Brothers um, trying to trademark react and protect their brand uh, is something we're going to see a lot more of. Uh, but we should be all right on the gym position, um, I guess, so long as I don't react to anything. Oh shit, is that a squirrel outside the window? The term early access has been poisoned after years of hack job developers taking the utter fucking piss with Steam's early access program, the very notion of the idea makes people roll their eyes and causes their skin to crawl. I remember the reaction people had when Microsoft announced early access was coming to Xbox One. What could and should have been an exciting announcement was instead met with wailing and gnashing of teeth and more than a little cynicism from yours truly, because the sad fact of the matter is that while early access is a promising idea in theory, it's become synonymous with unbridled shit and lazy chances, hoping to score a few free bucks from a trusting public. There have been notable success stories, sure. Darkest Dungeon is the latest such story, coming out of early access to rave reviews and a mostly satisfied fan base if we discount the weirdos who put thousands of hours into it and obsessively hate it. But, if we're being honest, for every Darkest Dungeon, there's at least two dragons. At least two after-reset RPGs. Pre-alphas being sold as alphas, games that aren't so much unfinished as unstuck. Started. Games with no content, or exist as asset flips, or are irredeemably broken. The bad far, far, far outweighs the good, and as a result of Valve's non-existent quality control, early access is a joke, a thing we roll our eyes at. It's done a disservice to the game industry, because any developer going for early access has to deal with a stigma caused by hundreds of get-rich-quick scumbags. All that said, the base idea is still sound, and that's why it seems to have yet again fallen to good old games to show Valve how it's done. This past week, GOG announced the rather drably named Games in Development program, its own version of Early Access. Seemingly more than aware of the horrible reputation now associated with Early Access, GOG has worked hard to ensure its own take on the system boasts more quality control and that users have far more agency with their purchases. It would most certainly behoove Valve to see what GOG's GID is doing. First of all, games in development will be carefully curated, and by that I don't mean it'll do what Valve did and leave curation to the users in a flimsy bid to look like it gives a shit. GOG will be handpicking the games sold through GID, and only wants games it as a company can stand behind, meaning it won't open the doors to any old bell end with a Unity license and five minutes of coding time to spare. GOG will be using the community to get the scoop on promising games, and we can see the results already. Early access games with actual content, like Starbound and Curious Expedition are among the first picks, as compared to Steam Early Access, whose recent offerings include an MMO with nobody playing it, and a racing game I was able to render unplayable within three minutes. Games in Development offers a far more forgiving refund policy too, with a 14-day no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. This is especially important with Early Access games, where development is fluid and a whole product can change overnight at any time. Or, as is frequently the case on Valve service, no changes are made at all to the pre-alpha asset flip that consists of a tiny Matt with no interactions and no evidence of the dev doing anything else to the fucking thing. Valve's whole two hour refund thing is fine and dandy, but more flexibility for early access games can only be a good thing for the end user, and will instill far more purchasing confidence. The third big difference between GID and EA, by far the most interesting, is a rollback feature. First of all, you can control when the game updates, giving you an extra level of security in the thing you bought. 
And if you do update your game and it breaks, you can restore the previous version. In addition, GOG will take snapshots of the game at regular intervals, allowing users to roll back whenever they want and always have access to earlier versions of a game. As well as adding a safety net in the case of game breaking updates, it allows for archival of a game's development process, a truly interesting ability to chart the progression of a production, and it'll better help developers work out how popular or unpopular a change to their game is. In short, GOG Games in Development is early access done right. If Valve had implemented these features when it first launched early access, it wouldn't be the detestable mess it is now. It wouldn't have a reputation so toxic that any developer using it has to overcome an extra hurdle of customer mistrust. Of course, GOG is a smaller company and isn't the sprawling unwieldy beast that is Steam. I get that. I get the argument that it's easier for GOG to have quality control and that Valve can't possibly head check every single game that passes through its sluice tubes. But ultimately, that's not my fucking problem. Valve was the one that opened its door to every piss merchant, con man, hack and rank amateur with delusions of competence. Ultimately, if it couldn't handle the responsibility of early access, it should never have launched a thing in the first bloody place. But that's Steam for you. Pure quantity over quality, the idea being to have more games than the competition, regardless of the state of those games, just to remain the biggest digital distribution service on PC. And that's been wonderful for Valve. The money doesn't stop rolling in. But the long-term cost, the real cost, has been to developers who have to contend with a hatred of early access games on sheer principle, who have to deal with such caustic mistrust that not even a great game like Darkest Dungeon can escape being accused of corruption for reasons I still don't understand. At the very least, Valve could clean out all the abandonware that litters early access now. All the games that have been left unfinished and unupdated so long, they're clearly never going anywhere. But I guess that's too much like real work. In the meantime, GOG is clearly doing it right, and I'm once again impressed at how it seems to understand what digital distribution should look and feel like. My only hope is they get Slime Rancher, one of the recent early access games that actually looks set to be going places, and look how an alpha build should look, unlike the pre pre alpha garbage some clueless dev shit out onto Steam under the guise of an alpha or beta build. Seriously, Slime Rancher is legit. It has honey slimes in it. Do you have honey slimes in you? No, didn't think so. In conclusion, Slime Rancher's pretty bloody cool. I'm sure some people are sick of hearing me go on and on and on about early access and Steam and all this stuff, but look at it from an objective standpoint. Hmm? If Valve and Steam didn't give me so much to complain about, I wouldn't complain about Steam and Valve so much. So really, it's not my fault. It's, it's not even me making this argument. It's simple math. The quantity of shit equals the quantity of times I have to complain about shit. So if you're going to be angry at anyone for covering the same topics over and over again, blame mathematics. It's math's fault. Let's put all the math people in jail uh, to cover up the fact that I retread familiar ground sometimes. I think that's a fair and just amount of retribution. Seriously though, early access is shit. So, you know, it's worth saying a lot. You know what else is worth saying a lot? Thank God for me. That'll, that'll do for an outro. Yeah. Oh shit, the squirrel's back!